Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Cthulhu Death May Die from Come On Games. Cthulhu Death May Die is, well, this is a overdue review. A review for a game that's been in my top 10 ever since I played it years ago. And has stayed in my top 10 ever since. So, um... You can kind of skip to the final thoughts, or you just got my final thoughts. I like this game a lot, but let's go ahead and talk about it. Let's talk about the how to play, the short overview. This is a fictional made-up scenario that does not exist on the board in front of you, just so we're clear. Uh, but past that, let's go ahead and dive into this. This is Cthulhu Death May Die. This is a game of you playing as investigators, playing as the investigators, trying to take down an elder god. A variety of elder gods that come in the game, the core game, expansions, tons of stuff for this game. But you're trying to take down the elder god before time runs out, or before he basically kills all of you. If any investigator dies before the Elder One is summoned onto the board, you lose. Or if all the investigators die after the Elder One is summoned onto the board, you lose. Or if time runs out along this track over here, well, you lose. The only way to really win in this game is to disrupt the ritual and then bring the Elder One onto the board where he's now vulnerable and then slowly take him down by shooting him in the face again and again until he dies. That's the general idea of this game. Past that, like I said already, the goal is to disrupt the ritual. You're going to be playing with scenarios as well as with different Elder Ones, and there are different Elder Ones and different scenarios. The core game comes with six scenarios and two Elder Ones, but you can get a bunch more content, uh, different options for getting more content, although there is a active Kickstarter or upcoming Kickstarter for this game if you want more opportunities to get more content, but you have a scenario, you have an Elder One, you mix and match the two to generate what you are playing against. The Elder One's going to define who the Elder One is that you're playing against, as well as the cards over here, as well as half of your Mythos deck, which are all the bad things that happen to you as you play. Your scenario will define the setup you have, as well as how you disrupt the ritual to bring the Elder One to the board and to make him vulnerable, as well as the other enemies you'll be fighting against. The mixing and matching of those two will define what your gameplay is like, and like I said, your goal is to disrupt the ritual. The game will give you, the scenario will give you a way to actually make the Elder One vulnerable. Things you have to destroy, things you have to do, places you have to go, stuff that has to be done in order to bring the Elder One onto the board and, and slowly destroy him. Past that, you're going to be going through an action selection, you're going to be going through an action sequence in which every single turn, an investigator goes ahead and they take three actions from a variety of actions here, running across the board, slowly moving across the board, dragging monsters with them, attacking monsters in their space by rolling dice equal to all their stats and abilities and their madness track, trying to figure out how many dice to roll to slowly take down the bad guys, alternatively resting in safe spaces, or alternatively episode-specific actions. Uh, various episodes will give you actions that are unique to that episode, things you can do, putting out fires, destroying the labs, different things you can do in the game, but you're going to be going ahead taking those actions every turn. You take three actions to move, to attack, attacking is going to be a very common action you're doing a lot, to rest, uh, to trade, as well as episode actions. When you're done taking your actions, when you're done going ahead trying to kill all the baddies and do what you need to do to accomplish your goals, you're going to go ahead and draw a Mythos card. This is where all those bad things happen to you. These Mythos cards are going to define the various bad things, as well as being a timer on the track, ensuring that the Elder One moves along the board. Because the Elder One's going to enter the board either when you disrupt the ritual, or alternatively, when it slowly marches from the green to the red, it will enter the board there. The only problem is if it enters the board the latter way, well, it's still invulnerable and you cannot kill, hurt, or do anything to it until you disrupt the ritual. So you can either disrupt the ritual before he's on the board, or try to navigate past a giant thing of death and still try to disrupt the ritual. When you're done drawing the Mythos card, you will either investigate or fight. If you are in a safe space, if an investigator is in a safe space all alone, they'll investigate, drawing a discovery card from the episode you're in, which will give you options, costs, and then different possibilities as far as how they will slot into your player board, giving you different upgrades and items you can have in the game. Alternatively, if you're not in a safe space, as the queen is not in a safe space over here, otherwise known as a, a Margie over here, this is the queen, may, may God rest her soul, but the queen over here is in a space over here with the enemies. If you are not in a safe space, the enemies will fight you over there, rolling their own dice against you. When you attack enemies, they don't fight back when you stay in a space with enemies at the end of your turn that's when they go ahead and do what they need to do to you when you're done with that resolve any end of turn effects which include elder one stuff uh, moving the elder along the moving the elder one along the board having different scenarios effects uh fire different things like that rinse and repeat to the next investigator's turn and continue that cycle taking actions moving the timer along having bad things happen having enemies spawn these mythical cards are a host of bad things from spawning enemies to just various ways to ding you in different ways meanwhile you're trying to balance your own personal player board where you have a a bunch of things going on including your stress over here, which is a way to re-roll dice or cost to pay for many things, your health, which will slowly tick downwards until you hopefully do not die, your madness, which is this track over here, which is one of my favorite parts of the game, because this madness track is responsible for you upgrading. Whenever you hit these points, you will upgrade your abilities. You have three different abilities, one unique to your person, and then two that are from a common pool of abilities to all the characters, and your madness track is going to possibly be a way of dying. If you get to the end, you go insane and you're done, but until you get to the end, you are slowly getting more dice and upgrading your abilities in this game. 
And that is basically Death May Die. Take a turn, move into this dungeon, you're basically playing in a dungeon crawler manner speaking, move along the tiles, navigate the, the threats and perils around you, level up and slowly go insane or toy with your insanity, try to figure out how to become powerful enough to take down the Elder One before he takes down you. With that, let's go into the game. Let's go into the review part of things, starting off with ease of play. Uh, the game is fairly easy to dive into. Uh, if you played Dungeon Crawls before, there's nothing crazy out of the box as far as what this game does. Rulebook is it's like a typical command rulebook. It has a lot of information, a lot of images, but it's fairly easy to comprehend and understand. As far as game time, it does depend on the scenario, but honestly, you're usually looking at somewhere in the range of, of just over an hour to play most scenarios. You can get them in around the hour mark, maybe up to 90 minutes. It rarely goes longer than that, although sometimes can. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, I like a lot about this game. My biggest thing by far though is that insanity track. The slow toying of going insane as you level up your abilities and the fact that there's, I mean the base game is going to come with 10 characters in the box but I have all the, the, the Kickstarter content, the expansion content which gives me somewhere in the range of 40 characters each with their own unique ability and then other abilities that they're mixing and merging and trying to figure out which characters to toy with, which characters to pair up, which characters for the scenario you're going for because each scenario has different goals and different abilities are in different demands. The, the ability to be stealthy, the ability to run, to, to shoot to a distant zone, all those things are in different demand depending on the scenario you're playing with, and so you're playing with this whole ability pool, but then you're constantly trying to go insane, you're constantly trying to roll for madness to slowly escalate how you actually power up in this game because you do not want to face the Elder One not powered up. The downside is the Elder One also escalates in the game as well, which means if you face the Elder One too powered up, that also means you're very close to going insane and losing, which brings me to my second thing, which is the Elder One's escalation. You see, the Elder One's going to have a card which eventually puts the Elder One into play, and then from there you have to deal 12 damage to it, at which point it'll respawn somewhere else, and then you have to deal another 12 damage to it, but now it's more powerful, rolling more dice with more abilities, until a third time you have to again deal a total of 36 damage to it. In between each of those times, he's leveling up, getting more powerful, and just escalating the game which leads to a power curve in Cthulhu Death May Die in which you are slowly getting more and more powerful as the Elder One gets more and more powerful which means every single game not maybe, maybe not every game but almost every single game of Cthulhu Death May Die I have ever played feels like you get to the end and you don't know what's going to happen. Have you powered up enough that you can actually take down the Elder One as he stomps down two of your friends and leaves them dying on the floor alone, but you can actually go ahead and be the last person standing, pointing the gun at his head, pulling the trigger and having him fall over? Alternatively, has he powered up too much and you're going insane and she's dying and they're all falling apart as a team, just falling to the floor. That power creep in the game makes every single endgame of Cthulhu Death May Die exciting. I love getting to the end of every one of these scenarios because I don't know what's going to happen. Even when you're losing, you're powering up enough that it feels like you have a chance. But even when you're winning, the Elder One's powering up enough that it feels like you might die and either one of those things are possible. There's a high degree of variability to the experience. Counting the fact that, the, first of all, there's six episodes in the box, and for the record, that first episode, I've probably played 10 plus times that first episode alone, which, granted, it is one of my favorite episodes, but then past that, the way you can mix and match Elder Gods into the box, the way you can mix and match the scenario that the, the investigators you play as, keep in mind, I am biased in this one because of the amount of content they have that goes past the core game, but this is a very variable experience with a ton of variety to the content and a ton of ways to mix up the experiences. Different scenarios play vastly different with different Elder Gods that you're pairing with them, giving you different things you have to be mindful of, different things to juggle and balance. The skills you use for episode one might change, not just based on the episode, but also based on the Elder One in play. And so it gives you just a ton of ways to engage with the game. And of course, you also have your own personal insanity that's variable to the game, giving you a lot of different ways for this to, to just be a different experience every single time you play and give you reason and reason to dive into it every single time. And then just the rolling of dice in this game, this, this, the rolling of a giant dice pool against a bunch of enemies as you both deal damage, as you go insane, as you go to the part where you're going to ga ga gathering a discovery card to power up even further, gathering more abilities, more, more ways to roll more dice, to do more damage, to level up abilities where you otherwise couldn't. This game just gives you a ton of fun things to do all around power creep, around, level, around powers and abilities, around slowly going insane and having the Elder One level up. It just is a very ridiculously fun experience. It is not too easy, it is not too difficult. I find it is really well done as far as it goes. There are small things you could do to, miss with, to mess with the difficulty if you are having issues in either direction, but overall this is just a solidly fun dungeon crawl of an experience. As far as things I don't like, there's only one aspect I don't like about the game, which comes down to the consistency of the experience, specifically in two areas. The first is player count. 
I do find that Cthulhu Death May Die is a very different experience with two, three, or four characters. Not players, with characters. The characters are on the board, the way the game escalates around many different things has a different pace to it as far as how you have to toy with the madness or not at different player counts, and you do have to kind of know that going in or you might have a different experience. If you try to play a two-player experience, a two-character experience, the same way you play a four-character experience, you might die, or you probably will die as you rapidly go far too insane because the, the health pool, everything else is balanced around player turns, but your ability to take on madness and know where that line is it is a different experience at different player counts and that is one issue in just the the consistency of the experience secondly from there is the episode consistency i find that there are episodes i love there are episodes i really didn't overall get that much out of and then there's a lot of episodes in the middle which are episodes i really really like overall i would say that while i love cthulhu death may die as an experience there are definitely better and worse episodes that i am more or less likely to replay as i go through the experience and that's something that is worth noting because if you play this episode versus that episode you might have a very different experience. Some episodes give you more more grunt work to do and less leveling up. Some episodes are just tons of fire and bur buildings burning down around you as you figure out how to power through it. So there is a degree of consistency to the experience, both in player count and episodes, and even older ones to a degree, that is a bit lacking. As far as I can see others not liking, this is a dice fest of a game. That aspect of, of, of powering up to the end as well, but you have two different aspects here. You first have dice rolling over here, where this is a ton of rolling dice, tons of luck, tons of chaos, the randomness and mythic card. This is not a game of high strategy. There's strategy, there absolutely is. There's a ton of strategy in this game, but this is not a game of high tactical strategy. This is a game of making decisions around the optimal play and then having the game hand you whatever the game hands you, which may or may not work to your favor. And then additionally, that end game escalation, that aspect that I walk into the end game never knowing who's going to win, and I love that, you may find it frustrating. Why is it that a game that you play so well, you get to the end game and you're still not sure who's going to win? Why do you have that aspect in play? The same reason I, the, the fact that I love that end game power creep may be something you find frustrating when you feel you've played a great game and the Elder One smacks you on the face and you lose in the end. As far as final thoughts on Cthulhu Death May Die, I, I love this game. This is my most played singular game. If I look, and, and the timing of this review is important because it's about to be overtaken by Gloomhaven, but if you look at any single game that I've played in my collection, Cthulhu Death May Die is the game that I have the most hours sunk into from any game. I have given this game dozens and dozens and dozens of plays, of plays and hundreds of hours of my life, and this is a thoroughly enjoyable experience that I... I highly recommend, I cannot recommend this game enough. This is a five out of five for me. If you like this style of game in any way, shape or form, if the things I've said, if the things I've talked about haven't scared you off, I love Cthulhu Let May Die. It has been a top 10 game for me since I played it and it has not left my top 10 since I have first played this game. I highly, highly recommend it. Past that, as far as game recommendations. Game recommendations, first of all, if you like Cthulhu Death May Die, I definitely recommend Zombicide, specifically Black Plague or Marvel Zombies as my two favorite Zombicide experiences. They'll very much uh, feed into the same aspects that you like with Cthulhu Death May Die. If you like one, you're likely going to like the other. And if you're looking for an Elder God version, a Cthulhu game of a different uh, different styling, my second favorite Cthulhu game of all time is going, is going to be Arkham Horror, the card game from Fantasy Flight Games. A very different experience with deck building and no miniatures at all, but an equally fantastic or not equally to me, but a very fantastic Cthulhu-based experience. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. There is an active Kickstarter for the third season of this, uh, this game, which I'll link to down below. But in any case, and as always, until next time, I hope you have a good one.